You know, the interwebs and the cyberwebs can be a frightening place, especially if you're somebody like me who works in tech and I see bad actors, hackers, infiltrators trying to get into computer systems all over the place. And at home, you're seeing it quite frequently. In businesses, you're seeing it even more as people are trying to get in and cause havoc. There's a whole range of different sorts of cyber attacks, cyber techniques that bad people use to try to bring down systems and steal data. There's malware, there's phishing, denial of service, or distributed denial of service. We're gonna be giving you a bit of a snapshot about what these are and maybe giving you some ideas about how you can prevent these things from actually happening. Ultimately, you can't protect your network from absolutely everything, but you can put a lot of good things into place to protect yourself from malware, from phishing, from DDoS, and getting a good router, a good firewall is one of those super, super important steps. First, the tech fail for the day, Microsoft Windows. No, 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 look, Microsoft Windows is not the tech fail. I mean, some people who die hard Mac and Linux folks may think that Windows is a fail, but the reality is Windows has actually been quite good. It's been around for a very, very long time. There was this operating system called Windows Vista. Oh, Vista. And let me tell you, it was quite the experience. I didn't like it very much, and neither did a lot of other people. Now look, I don't wanna to be too hard on Vista, but let's just say that it's had its fair share of issues. It was slow, it was buggy. It had a habit of crashing at the most inconvenient times. Vista was very hungry for resources. It made everything else run slow. You're running apps, it just would not work very, very well because Vista's going, it's mine, all these resources are mine. And it was even worse for people who would have old computers. Old computers trying to run Vista, it was like just, you, you bricked that machine. And look, in the end, Vista was such a train wreck that Microsoft couldn't wait to get rid of it. And they replaced it with Windows 7 only a few years after that. So if you ever come across a computer that's running Windows Vista, walk away slowly and don't look back. Phishing is a type of social engineering attack. The attacker poses as somebody who is legitimate, tries to pose as somebody who is a real person. Could be a bank, could be a government agency, and they're purpose, of course, is to try to trick the person to giving login credentials to steal data. And it's very, very common for phishing attacks to be done over email, over SMS, but they can also be done via phone calls where you receive a telephone call from somebody who is claiming to be somebody that they're actually not. Another one is the spear phishing, where it's targeting a specific individual. They've done a bit of research on this person. They know their name. They maybe know their position in the company. They could be somebody important in the company, somebody who holds a level of authority. Now, a type of phishing attack that is specifically aimed at a senior person, such as a CEO, a COO, is what's called whaling. Whales are big. They are the top honchos, the people at the very, very top. So they're gonna be holding a lot more keys than somebody who is not a senior executive. You've then got smishing, not phishing, but smishing. And these commonly occurred over SMS or text message. And of course, I'm sure you've received them. I receive them, I get them quite regularly. And you're gonna be getting a message that appears to be from a legitimate person, a legitimate entity, and it's asking you to do something to then provide sensitive information, critical information, and click potentially on a malicious link. One that is quite common, of course, is a post office one. I get these quite regularly, where they say that your incoming package has been lost or has been delayed. Click on this to try track it down. Sounds pretty, pretty legitimate. And similar to that is a vishing attack with a V. And this is now done over a telephone call, over a phone call. You're gonna receive a phone call from an attacker posing as somebody legitimate. Well, ultimately you're gonna be getting emails all the time. So I recommend in general, don't use your email out on the internet to register for stuff, for newsletters, things like that. I mean, sometimes you have to, sometimes it's nice to keep up to date, but the more your email is out there, the more likely you're just gonna get spam, you're gonna get phishing things. Be skeptical, be cautious, know the signs. When you get an email, double check it, look at it. Where is it coming from? Who is the email addressed to? Is it an address to you with your actual name? Does the text look a little bit funny? Is it written in maybe bad English? Is it asking you to do something? Is it asking you to do an immediate action? Generally, something's asking you to do something straight away, 
be a little bit suspicious. Does it have any links? When you hover your mouse over those links, do they actually point to a really weird URL? Let's talk a little bit about malware. Each different type of malware has its own unique characteristics. Not all malware is created equal. What's the first one that we can talk about here? Well, the first has been around for a long time. Viruses. Viruses are one of those things that scare people. And if you're a human being, which you likely are, unless you're an AI bot, you're going to get a virus from time to time. A virus makes you feel lousy. A virus knocks you out. You could be in bed for days, not being able to do anything. They're little pesky things. They attach themselves to other files, to programs, to applications, and then they spread throughout other systems and infect other systems. Think about the matrix. I'm always thinking about the matrix when you got Agent Smith and he says, the human race is a disease. You're a virus. You spread to another area. And that's a really good example of what a virus does. You then have worms, not little worms like in the ground, but they can get pretty hungry and they're a little bit similar to viruses. They're self-contained applications. So somebody bad has gone out and actually made this thing. They've made this worm to go and replicate themselves as well. And then they spread through computer networks. They replicate, they copy themselves, and then they consume system resources and they just cause a lot of performance issues on networks. Trojan horses is another one. If you think about what a Trojan horse is in, in its old fashioned way, well, you've got a whole bunch of folks hiding inside of this Trojan horse that then gets wheeled out as a gift and you open it up going, oh wow, look at this beautiful gift. And inside of it are bad things. Essentially it disguises itself as legitimate software, as legitimate files. It looks legitimate. And then you open it up and it tricks the user. It tricks you, it tricks your staff into downloading and installing them. I really do not like ransomware attacks. And I mean, these, these things can uh, cripple systems. And again, it's a malware, but its whole purpose of course is to get money from people because you've got to pay them to be able to get the key to recover things. And you as an admin, you're gonna to try to unencrypt them, but you can't. So you've got really two choices. You either try to go and recover all of your systems or you pay the ransom. Don't pay the ransom. Those bad people are then gonna know that you are willing to pay. So it's not a good thing, but recovering the data could also be very, very problematic. So this comes back to you ensuring that you've got backups in place. We then move into spyware, a type of malware that is designed to spy on a user's activity. Hence the name spyware. A little bit of code inside of a computer, snooping around, gathering information, getting ready to strike, or secretly stealing that information, sending it to a remote server, sending it to somebody else on the internet without you actually knowing. It's spying on you. Adware being a type of malware that displays unwanted advertisements, redirects user browsers to specific websites. Quite frustrating, quite annoying. We've all seen them. Multiple pop-ups coming up on a website, ads. Now, what are some of the best ways to stop or at least prevent malware? Well, one of the first things is to have yourself some sort of an antivirus or anti-malware software solution. Installing something that is a good solution that actually is monitoring files as you're opening up files. Uh, it may be running a scheduled scan once a week just to make sure that things are running good. Keep your operating systems and software up to date. There's a good reason why vendors, why Microsoft, why Apple release new updates. There may be vulnerabilities, there's maybe things like that. And that also includes all of the software, so your applications. We'll cover this a little bit later in the video, but having a good firewall is paramount. Having something that can actually monitor traffic coming in and coming out of your network. Now, there's a whole bunch more that we can talk about. Having a good network structure, a good setup, having good passwords, having multi-factor authentication, practicing safe browsing habits when you're on the internet, and ultimately, it's educating yourself, making sure that you know what to look out for so that you don't fall victim. Let's talk about DDoS, Distributed Denial of Service, or denial of service for DOS for short. The whole point of a DDoS attack is to bring a service down, generally an online service or a website and making that website unavailable. And the main way that they do that is by overwhelming that website with traffic from lots of places from a multiple amount of sources. Hence, it's distributed. It's coming from lots of different sorts of places. And what could happen is there could be a pool of hundreds of computers or thousands of computers out there that are all being used to try to send multiple ping commands to a website to try to bring that website down. And essentially, it makes it impossible 
for real legitimate users to be able to access that website. Websites go down because they just cannot handle the load. And one of the most common ways is to limit bandwidth because there's so much traffic going to that particular website and it just gets flooded because it just can't handle all of this traffic all at once. Could also be if the server is not beefed up with a lot of good resources, the server itself just loses capacity, loses CPU, RAM, it's just gone through the roof, it just cannot handle all this amount of requests. And the attacker, the person who's actually setting up this DDoS, may use lots of different techniques, such as botnets, where it's just a network of compromised devices. This is what I mentioned before, a lot of computers being used together to try to bring down a website. Now you ask yourself, how can you protect your website, your online sites from these sort of DDoS attacks? One of the most simplest ways is to implement a DDoS system, a system that is designed to look out for this suspicious behavior. And lots of ISPs or internet service providers offer this protection service. And then these ISPs can detect and block a lot of this traffic before it even reaches your network. Using firewalls is another common technique to prevent DDoS attacks from happening. A firewall can be used to block specific IP addresses. For example, you know that a specific range of IP addresses are being used where you can block that entire range. Now a device that I love that can do a lot of this is the Microtik L009. Look at this device. It is a beautiful, red, slim, cool looking device. This particular one has eight ports and it's got power over ethernet in and out, you've got an SFP port, you've got a USB port, you wanna control all of the junk that sort of comes into your network, we can actually install Pi Hole onto the router and create rules based on IP addresses, on ports, on protocols, you can use NAT. And I love the fact that the case itself, the entire case acts like a massive heatsink, so it protects your system and your setup from overheating. It is not just a router, it is a security device. You can run apps directly on the unit. And what I love about this is that it actually came with rack mounted bits. So I can rack it up to my server rack. You don't have to do this, but I just like the fact that it's got that as an option. Service that I love and I use quite a fair bit for protection of DDoS. And I would almost say every single website should probably be behind this thing called Cloudflare. It actually can identify and mitigate any of these sort of DDoS attacks before they actually even happen, before they reach your server. Look at the traffic, they go, that looks a little bit suspicious and they can separate the legitimate traffic from the malicious traffic. So it actually has smarts built in to be able to separate bad from good traffic and they actually will prevent any of this malicious traffic to even get to your server in the first place. Ultimately, you can't protect your network from absolutely everything, but you can put a lot of good things into place to protect yourself from malware, from phishing, from DDoS, and getting a good router, a good firewall is one of those super, super important steps. How many emails have you received in the last week that have sort of been phishing? Quite scary. It's happening more and more and more. It's happening a lot in people's homes, happening a lot in companies, and now you know a little bit more about it. I love tech and hopefully you do too. And why don't you stay tuned for the next video? Also subscribe. We continue talking about all things tech. We'll see you then.